Hey guys, uh, this is different uh, virtual exchange. We can call it VR exchange, whatever you guys want to call this. Just a devotional thought for you guys today. Uh, hopefully you've gathered together uh, around a computer screen, maybe with siblings, your parents. Uh, just to, to take a quick minute from God's Word, how it applies to our situation today, and maybe some discussion questions that we'll talk about. Uh, you're probably thinking, why are we filming in this location? Well, there's a lot of fears that we have in life, uh, especially today with COVID-19 coronavirus. Uh, what will it affect? You know, some of you guys are probably asking, am I going to go back to school this year? For some of you, you're going to be like, yes, no more school. And some of you are going to be like, I want to go back. Um, some of your parents may be wondering, am I even going to have a job when all this is over? There's a lot of questions and a lot of fears out there. And why we're standing here uh, is a moment that I had in my life where I was kind of afraid. Um, the stairwell that I just walked through, I came with Kelly in October of 2015 to meet and interview for the student pastor position here. So as I'm interviewing to be the youth pastor, uh, the first Sunday we ever come, we walk through this stairwell. I walk into this room not knowing what was going to happen, who was going to be here. Uh, and so I was nervous. I was afraid. What are people going to think about me? Who, who, what are they going to think about who I am as a person? All of these questions swirling through my mind, I was kind of afraid. But Jesus uh, tells us, uh, that we shouldn't be afraid. Uh, the Bible actually says that we shouldn't be afraid 365 times. Fear not, don't be afraid, however it's said. So Luke chapter 12, Jesus talks several times about not being afraid. Uh, in verse 4 he says, Don't fear those who kill the body uh, and do nothing more, but fear him who has the authority to throw people into hell and death. Uh, so don't be afraid of people. We should fear God. Later on, he says, don't be afraid of when you're pulled into the synagogue. What are you going to say in front of people? Uh, the Holy Spirit will give you words to say. And then on and on and on. And then Jesus begins to talk about the cure for anxiety. Um, he begins to talk about what do we do with fear? How, do, how should we react? How should Christians react to this? And Jesus ends his parable and his teaching, kind of ties it up by saying, uh, this is Luke 12, verses 31 and 32. He says, But seek first his kingdom, and these things will be provided for you. Verse 32 says, Don't be afraid, little flock, because your Father delights to give you the kingdom. Now, what does Jesus mean here? Uh, seek first the kingdom. We can kind of do the math on that one. We should seek God's kingdom first, and all the rest of the, the fears and the priorities in life will then fall into place, or at least they will be lined up roughly where they're supposed to be. But then he says something else. Don't be afraid, little flock. Almost when Jesus says, don't fear, children, don't don't be afraid. You know, when you're a little kid and you're afraid of the things in the dark or there's something under your bed or whatever, it's almost like your parents saying, don't be afraid. There's nothing under your bed. There's nothing in this room. Jesus is having this same tone. Don't be afraid, little flock, because your Father delights to give you the kingdom. What does the kingdom have to do? We're supposed to seek it first, which would make you think, oh, I am supposed to do the work for this. Will I be good enough? Will I escape God's judgment? All these questions can run through your head of, is it good enough? But here's the good news, is that your Father in heaven delights to give you the kingdom. God does the work to save you. And for those of you who are watching this and you know, I'm... I'm and you know, you think to yourself, I'm probably not a Christian. This is good news for you. God is at work for you. And for those who are Christians, God has worked for you. Your salvation. He has done the work to earn it. 
to give it to you. It's a gift. Now, we would think giving charitably uh, that God, it's like empty charity or empty hearted, uh, you know, like, yeah, 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 I know you need it. Uh, so here you go. But God doesn't feel that way about us at all. In fact, He delights, He takes joy in giving us the kingdom. And what is our greatest need? Our greatest need is that we need to be saved. We need to be saved. And God has done the work to accomplish that. And He takes delight and joy in making sure that we have the opportunity to accept that gift. And so, if you're wondering how God feels about you, one, we should see that God is very passionate about you. He loves you, and even in the midst of this coronavirus fear and pandemic, He has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your future and for your eternity. He has a plan to save you and to hold you and to give you the kingdom, to share it with you. And He delights to give it to you. He wants to give it to you. He sends messengers out so that you can hear on how you can become a part of His kingdom. And so if we know how God feels about us and that He's met our biggest and greatest need, that should dissolve our fear a little bit, just a little bit. That in the days of uncertainty, and there are legitimate fears, what's going to happen next? How's school going to work? Is my, are my parents going to have a job? whatever your fear is today watching this, is that God has provided for your biggest need, conquered your greatest fear because He loves you. And so that should dissolve our fears that we can trust Him and that He's faithful. So today, as you're looking at Luke 12, verses 31 and 32, Identify what are the things that you're afraid of during this time. I, I have things that I'm concerned about too. We all do. What, what are the things we're afraid of? Are we not allowing God into our life to a place where He can speak to those fears? That we're allowing Him to conquer those fears and provide for us. Are we seeking His kingdom first? Now, we're all stuck in our houses. What can we do to seek first His kingdom? We can read His Word. We can pray to God. We can have a conversation with Him. And we'll hopefully have more on that later. And we can interact with Him, but then we can also share the gospel with others. Maybe that's through uh, Skype, or maybe it's through an Instagram story, whatever it is. But we have opportunities to seek first His kingdom. And you can do it today. And in that, everything should fall into place. And that God is always going to provide for you. And He's always going to love you. And so I hope today, you, my, stu my students, love you guys. You're my little flock. Don't be afraid. Seek first the kingdom. And then God is graciously going to bring it to you. Love you guys. Look for more of this um, and hope to uh, have more of these. And, uh, you know, comment in the section below on YouTube or shoot me a text or whatever if you have any questions about this at all. Uh, parents, uh, thank you for watching with your students. Um, walk through some of the discussion questions that uh, we talked about and just let me know how your conversation went. I love you guys. Talk to you soon.